welcome back to Up the Villa. This is our opposition preview for Aston Villa v Bologna. Delighted to be joined by Tommy Sport. How you doing, mate? Fine, thank you for having me on this uh, on this show. Thank you. Yeah, loved it. I mean, it's quite difficult to find a Bologna fan, but I found you and I, I loved your content on TikTok as well. So uh, Villa fans, I'll put the link to Tommy's sort of uh, content in the description so you can go and check that out as well. So I really want to find a little bit about Bologna's history first. So how, how big are Bologna in Italian football? What trophies have they sort of won? Um, okay. How did you become a fan? Um, we are one of the most successful team in uh, in the history of Italian football. Uh, unluckily, the last uh, the last league title was in 1964, so a lot of time ago, and uh, so was our last participation in uh, Champions League. So last our uh, participation in Champions League was in 1965, I think. And we lost because just of a flip of a coin. Because in the during that time when you when you draw against uh, someone and uh, there were no, there were no penalties, but it was just a coin to decide whoever is gonna advance in the competition. So we we lost just because of that, and uh, and we had to wait uh, about sixty years to come back to the to the Champions League to the maximum level of uh, of football in uh, in Europe. Uh, we won some Coppa Italia as well. That last one was in 1974. Uh, so it's a lot of time that we don't uh, we don't win uh, something in in Italy. Uh, we were really successful during the first part of the 19th century. We have a seven scudetto, like I said before, and um, we had some troubles in the last uh, years, uh, starting from uh, the 1990, I think. Because of some financial problems, we 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 have been relegated a lot of times uh, because uh, because we were not able to to have enough uh, enough money to invest in the squad, and uh, so we have we have been relegated two times in the last twenty years, for example. Uh, one time uh, uh, with uh, a spareggio, so it was uh, uh, the last match of the season after the season. So it was decisive against Parma in 2006, and we have been relegated in 2014. Uh, in 2014, we have been relegated, and um, we had the, the biggest uh, crisis, uh, financially speaking, uh, to Serie B. And uh, there was this acquisition by Saputo, that is uh, currently our president. They had made uh, uh, that promised to to take us to to glory in in ten years, and he fulfilled his uh, his uh, his word. Uh, so our last um, our last um, uh, relegation was in two thousand and fourteen. When uh, we lost uh, against uh, one decisive game in, in, uh, in our stadium against Catania, 2-1, we have been relegated. We had a really big uh, financial uh, crisis. And uh, we have been acquired uh, by Saputo when we were in uh, Serie B. And uh, he made us uh, a promise to take us to glory in uh, 10 years. And uh, during, uh, during this time, we, we, we had some... Uh, uh, up and down, but after 10 years, he fulfilled his promise and we came back to Champions League football. So uh, he's uh, really uh, our, the key of our success in the last 10 years. Uh, apart from, uh, apart from, um, from our manager, uh, Tiago Motta, last season, that uh, in my opinion was fantastic. Yeah, I mean, any Villa fan that's watching will know that there is massive similarities between your rise and our rise. You know, you talk about your president wanting to take you to the top. Well, we had new owners around six years ago when we were in the championship, which is like Division One. We got promoted and then we was able to get into the Champions League. So there's real similarities between the two clubs. We won the European Cup in 1982, which was over 40 years ago. And that's our last 
time that we was in Europe as well. So you're saying around 60 years. So you're experiencing Champions League football for the first time, just like we are. Hearing yeah. that anthem, I imagine, is, is absolutely amazing. So I'll touch on that in a second then. So you've spoke about Thiago Motta, and yeah. he was your manager, and now he's not your manager. So how were you with him and how highly regarded was he? I mean, uh, he was uh, a great manager, in my opinion. Um, a lot of uh, Bologna fans has, has some uh, uh, reluctancy to talk about him now because he left for Juventus. But uh, he, in, uh, in my opinion, was um, the key of the success uh, of last year because he managed to... Um, to make the, our team uh, perform uh, even better than we everybody could uh, could think, so he, he find a solution to make us uh, play good football because we were a, a, a good looking squad, let's say. So everybody uh, was uh, was having a good time watching Bologna, and at the same time he managed to have success. Uh, and um, losing him was uh, a big, uh, big, uh, uh, big problem for uh, for us, in my opinion, because uh, he was uh, he was central in the in the um, in the project. And uh, we started again this year with the new coach. Uh, his name is uh, Vincenzo Italiano. He was uh, at Fiorentina before, so he had. Uh, some international experience. He was chosen for that. He has two uh, conference league final uh, in the last two years. He had the uh, two conference years final in the last two years, one Coppa, Coppa Italia final in the last two years. So uh, we managed to have uh, an experienced manager for uh, the competition, not for Champions League, but uh, talking about European football. And uh, we play differently from last year because last year we were more about uh, uh, defensive uh, football, uh, trying uh, to not let the opposition score. This year is more open, so we play in open, um, open field football. We we press a lot. Uh, we we try to gain the ball and go as fast as possible to score. Uh, uh, using the wings, uh, the wings are really important. So on the right side, Orsolini, and on the left side, uh, Ndoy, uh, that is really fast and uh, is uh, is key uh, for our for our um, for our plays. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that that's the big difference from uh, from last year. Are the fans sort of getting on board with the new manager as well? Because I imagine it's quite difficult when you've had a really successful manager to sort of accept a new one. How are you playing at the minute? Are you doing well in the league or is there sort of like teething problems? No, we, we are still adapting, uh, especially in the league. Italian football is, um, is a lot tactic. So uh, when you have a new coach, you need uh, some games to adapt to his uh, play style and uh, actually some fans are just getting on board with him because we're uh, very in love with uh, Thiago Marta and uh, from the team of last year and it's really difficult this transition from uh, per the, 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 the last season and to this season uh, also because we have lost uh, key players like uh, Joshua Zerze and uh, Riccardo Calafiori uh, so yeah the the most difficult thing about this season is is this what you, what you what you ask me so getting on board with the manager uh, start to um, to understand that it's a new season and uh, a lot of things have changed and adapt to what uh, what uh, the football the new football coach uh, offer us. Yeah, who who are your best players then? So who who should Villa be really watching out for? I think we are more more uh, more concentrating on watching your players, especially John <laughs> Duran. But uh, if if uh, if, uh, if a Villa want to be concerned about someone, should be concerned about Ndoy. In the like I said on the wing, um, he's really good in the one against one, one versus one. 
and uh, he can dribble really easily, really fast, uh, really, really good player. The only thing that he can't do is is scoring. So he made <laughs> he ma- he can go he can uh, make an assist but not score. And uh, another good player for me in the center uh, midfield is uh, Remo Freuler. So another Switzerland player, another Swiss player. And uh, if he is on form, and right now he isn't, but if he is on form, Riccardo Orsolini also on the right wing uh, has a good shot, especially from outside. And uh, our striker, if uh, last time he didn't play in a month in, um, in Liverpool, uh, he, our manager decided to play Dalinga. But uh, if uh, Santiago Castro plays, uh, he has a good shot also from the outside. He made a really good goal. Uh, if you want to watch it against uh, Monza, we were away, so Monza Bologna, uh, he was made a decisive goal from outside, and. Um, there's some um, there's some people that uh, uh, say that he's a, a mini Lautaro, uh, so it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's really really funny to, to really fun to watch. Yeah, so Champions League football then it is special. It, it's yeah. special when you hear the anthem. I watched your video when you were reacting to the anthem being played in the rain. I mean, what was the weather like? Because it looked like you were all soaking wet. It was pouring, mate. Uh, like, <laughs> we were, we were, uh, we were soaking wet, like you said. Uh, it, our stadium doesn't have the roof, so uh, <laughs> I was in the um, in the in the Curvandra Costa. That is where our tifosi uh, go, and uh, we were so like the emotions were top level. Uh, was the first time for me hearing the. Uh, Champions League anthem and uh, was an experience and I didn't care about the rain. I just wanted to <laughs> to have this moment on camera for all my life, you know, to have uh, these uh, these emotions uh, uh, on uh, on um, on a little video that I can see <laughs> in sixty years, maybe when we will <laughs> come back to Champions League. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. For me, it, it is really it, special. It's really special, and I mean, you drew that game, so you've got one point so far. What are you expecting from the Champions League? Do you want to just get to the next stage, or do you want to try and go as far as you can? Because your manager's got experience in in Europe as well. Yeah, I would like to be in the playoffs. Let's say so. I arrive to compete for a spot in the last sixteen. Uh, but uh, for us, it would be like a really big achievement. We know that we we have uh, a team that uh, has to struggle a lot for that uh, for that goal and to fight a lot for that goal. And uh, our um, our um, path in Champions League has to be different uh, uh, in uh, away games uh, because uh, we need uh, we need to score some points in away games, but we have to focus mainly on home games. We have uh, really difficult uh, away games. Uh, we we had Liverpool, we have you at Villa Park. That for me, it's one of the most difficult games that we can face right now. Uh, we have two. We travel two times to Lisbon to have uh, one game against Sporting, one game against uh, Benfica. And at home, we have uh, different kind of uh, teams that are more, uh, uh, more not not easy because it's also it's uh, it's Champions League football, but uh, it's uh, mm, easier, let's say, but for us to 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 face uh, like Monaco, uh, so l- different teams, you know. Yeah, it's interesting that you've got two English teams and two Portuguese teams then. That's yeah. that's quite mad how it throws it about. And I think this Champions League format is is different because obviously we play totally different teams to what you play as well. We've got Monaco as well. Um, so who's the pot one team that you've got then? So who's the, the biggest team that you will face? Was it Liverpool? Liverpool, yeah. And then we have uh, Borussia Dortmund. In uh, mm-hmm. in our uh, in our stadium, uh, then we have uh, Aston Villa from Pot. From Pot Four, we were not so lucky because we had you. 
So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not lucky at all, let's say. Uh, but, uh, no, but it... It, it'll be it'll be a big game. So just touch on one thing then before we t- talk about the game. So Liverpool, you played pretty well against Liverpool. Yeah, we we were proud of our team. We I was uh, I was a Liverpool and uh, it was amazing uh, to to experience that game, and uh, we were really proud uh, and we played um, good football. But uh, like I said, uh, I think the the big the big difference is that. Uh, Liverpool lets play you, okay. So mm-hmm. doesn't uh, wait for you to play, doesn't wait for you in the, in the midfield like uh, they usually do here in Italy. But uh, Liverpool uh, give you the one against one on all the pitch, you know. So let mm-hmm. your players play f- the ball, uh, and it's not afraid of you attacking because they are stronger. They have uh, really good players, and one, this is one of the main difference I think we will face. Um, uh, against uh, your team, no, you are more about yeah. uh, tactics. You have m- a more uh, a manager that is more about tactics. So I'm more scared uh, in, about uh, Aston Villa than uh, than Liverpool. Good, that's interesting. That that's I, nice to hear I, from an opposition I, fan. <laughs> because I I really I, I watch the Prem and I think you have uh, different kind of football that it's. Uh, more difficult for us to adapt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that I think that's pretty fair. To be fair, cause that's the way Emery is, isn't it? He's um, he looks at each game individually, tactically. He finds real weaknesses. He, he we don't sort of play the same each game. So I think that's um, a, a really good observation that you've got. Then, so what are your thoughts on this game? Then, how, how do you think it's going to pan out? How do you think Bologna are going to approach the game at Villa Park? Do you think? That will learn things from the Liverpool game as well. I hope we will learn something. I hope that we will learn that we have to need we need uh, one one striker that uh, uh, that can score. So I hope he plays Santiago Castro and not Dalinga. Uh, and I really hope that we can uh, we can come to Villa Park and. Uh, uh, and score at least one goal uh, because it would be our first Champions League goal. So an amazing emotion for us. And my hope are in a draw. So I, I, I can. I, my hope is that we we draw against you. Would be amazing to come home with one point. So that that my 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 main focus is on that. I don't care how we get it, but <laughs> the most important is, is to get it. What can um, Villa expect from your fans as well? Are, are they loud? When we played Bayern Munich, they were like just bouncing all game. So, what are your away fans like? We are loud. We we are loud. We chant for all the game. But uh, even if we lose, we, we chant even if we lose. It doesn't matter the 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 scoreboard. Uh, but we we our I have to make some difference because uh, in Italy we still have uh, hooligans, we still have ultras, okay? So uh, I have to make this difference. Uh, some uh, some people may have may may are not uh, may not might not be so friendly. So the hooligans and people like that, you know, just because uh, it's uh, it's their way of being, not because they are they are evil or something. But the other, the other, uh, the other um, Bologna fans are really friendly. For example, in Liverpool, we, 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 we went out also during the night after the game, and we drank some uh, some pints with uh, with the Liverpool fans, uh, exchanging scarves. Uh, I have one scarf that one uh, one Liverpool fan gave me. So it was really 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 amazing moment of. Uh, of football for me, so yeah, we we, we are we have uh, we are a, a really friendly, let's say, <laughs> supporters. We are really friendly supporters. Yeah, I've loved it. I've loved chatting to you. I've I've learned a lot, and it's been great getting your insight onto your club. Or your passion for your club really comes through, and I imagine a lot of Villa fans have really enjoyed this episode. So um, I will put your socials in the description so everyone can go and, and follow you and check your content out. And yeah, it's been great chatting to you, mate. So thank you, and enjoy the game. 
Thank you, and see you in uh, Birmingham because I will be there. So I, I will be in the stands. Oh, brilliant! That's that's amazing. Then, um, so yeah, hopefully I will see you around somewhere. Yeah, of course. Maybe for one pint after the game. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Thank you, mate. Thank you.